to be gooder than that we've got to quit singing with our mouth that's mouth singing that's not soul singing when you get David said and he didn't say my mouth magnify he said my soul you got to mix your emotions with your sensitivity and sincerity get a cocktail that God can't refuse come on somebody and let it come up and out my God is a good God I mean my God is a good and then we're gonna say my God is a healing God my God is a rich God Come on, let's sing it. My God's a good God. Yes, He is. Come on. My God's a good God. Yes, He is. My God is good God. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. He's a healing God. My God's a healing God. Yes, He is. My God is a healing God. Yes, He is. My God's a healing God. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Some of you, some of you are having trouble pronouncing the word rich. Probably some of you can't even spell the word rich. So we're going to practice this because you're about to be rich. People don't talk poor, they don't walk poor, they don't act poor, they act like they serve a rich God. Come on, say the word rich. Say rich. Come on. Rich. Now sing it. My God's a rich God. Yes, he is. My God is a rich God. Yes, he is. My God is a rich God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. My God is a wealthy God. Yes, he is. My God is a wealthy God. Yes, he is. My God is wealthy God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is.
Tonight, I want you to predetermine. If I can get a little bit of volume back there, Mr. Sound Man of God, if I can get a lead. Thank you, sir. Long before that the stone hit the giant, his words hit the giant. We talked about that last time. You know, you, you got to predetermine that everything in your life is subject to change. Everything you're looking at is far from permanent. And the moment you buy into permanent, you buy into depression and hopelessness. And the closest you'll ever get is singing these songs. That's the closest you'll ever get to rich or wealthy. But the moment you make a decision that hearing aids and wheelchairs and canes and walkers and poor and broke and bicycles and no cars and a lot, the moment you begin to realize they are only for a season. And that season is over. You know, we never, we're not against wheelchairs. I'm not against wheelchairs. I'm not, that would be foolish to be against wheelchairs or medicine. We're for that. We're just not for that forever. See, I, Words of Life and the foundation of this church believes that anywhere in the journey, a suddenly can take place. Anywhere in the journey, a voice can speak. Anywhere in the journey, you have sudden favor. And you don't need the wheelchair no more. See, we, we're, we're not people here that just kind of go along and come in here and get a spiritual massage. We're expecting things to change. We're expecting a greater testimony than we ever had. Come on, put your hands up and say, I declare. The best is about to take place. I'm moving on up. Into a higher place. A deeper place. A no limited place. Because I serve a God that knows no limits. Come on, give him a shout. There's a monsoon out there. It's raining on the inside in here. Something's breaking loose. Something's breaking loose right here. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. In, in your Bible tonight, I want you to turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter Five, Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. I want to share some thoughts with you tonight about visitation on your money. A lot of the miracles that took place, a lot of the visitation took place, had to do with money. Is that right? Are you there? Luke chapter 5, it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake at Gesenaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Come on, say nets with an S. Most of the fisher, fishing boats of that day didn't carry one net. Most of the fishing boats of that day carried multiple nets. Two, three, most of them had four or five fishing nets. They would throw a net out on that side and one out on that side. They'd throw one off the back side. They surrounded the boat 
Back then, their nets weren't as big as they are today. So each fishing boat carried multiple nets on it. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him and he said, Master, we have toiled all the night, have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Jesus asked him to let down all the nets. So Peter said, okay, I will partially obey you. Jesus was saying, let loose every net on the boat. Follow with me just for a second here before we get into this too deep. Because you may be sitting in a seat of opportunity tonight to get a revelation that will move you into a place you've never been. God's already moving. He's waiting for you to move. And tonight we're going to see the connection between wealth and health. Your money's connected to your well-being. He fully expected complete cooperation coming from somebody who caught nothing. You would think when somebody has caught nothing, they'd be a little desperate more than what they are. It's amazing how picky poor people can be. It's amazing how people who don't have much can be so, you know, well, where'd that come from? And what's this? And how's that? And, you know, it's just amazing how uncooperating. Because sometimes whenever you're in lack, it affects your thinking. It affects your attitude. It affects your confession. Now, we need to get over that, but it does have an impact. Especially if you've been poor a long time or been in lack a long time. Been in debt a long time. Never seen a hundredfold return. Never seen all the credit cards paid off. Never been able to write a check out for $5,000 to your church. Oh, I'm talking to some people tonight. I mean, we love you. We love your heart, but we need your money too. Come on, someone say amen. This gospel, to get this gospel to where it needs to go. And to get you to where you were designed to be. You know, and, and, you know, God made it so that you don't have to hit a golf ball, shoot a basketball, invent the light bulb. He meant it so that the power of your seed can put you on an equal playing field with anybody. That's God's, that's God's, you know, parody that's in the earth. So he's only trying to help Peter. He felt bad. They came in, they caught how much? So he says to them, I got some advice for you. Let down your nets. And here's Peter, who you would think would be okay. Let down, throw the nets out, plural. But instead, he decides to alter the plan. He decides in that moment to think, well, God don't quite understand. Jesus is really not a great fisherman. He don't understand how this all works. So I'll let, okay, ne we've caught nothing, but nevertheless, at your word... I'll let down one of the nets. So Jesus just looking at him. So he lets down one of the nets. Well, when he let down that one net, they caught so many fish that both boats began to sink. So then Peter comes crying to the Lord thinking, my God, my God, I'm a sinful man. Peter's thinking, man, if I sank boats with one net, I'd have emptied the whole sea if I'd have let down all the nets. Come on, somebody give God a shout. The key to what you need in comparison to where you are right now is what kind of cooperation you connect with the Holy Ghost. Has nothing to do with where you work. Has nothing to do with how much money you have in your hand or pocket tonight. It's are you at a place where you want to fully obey or partially obey? 
Do you want to let down all the nets and empty the sea? Or do you satisfy with, you know, well, I'm knowing what I can. It's amazing when we were riding here, we passed the mall. And I thought, boy, you passed the mall this time of the year. They put up a few lights, a couple reindeer, little chestnuts roasting on the open fire, a few silver bells, and people were just throwing credit cards everywhere. It's amazing how when they set the climate, the malls pack out. They put up this famous word that says, sale. Two hats for one price. They don't tell you one is from the USA and one is from Taiwan. Come on, somebody. And they just throw signs up and put on music and flashlights. And I mean, people just flock. And then you go in there and you hear that music. You know that music, silver bells. Silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city, ring-a-ling. And here you are, and you're on a tight budget. But when you got that card, you're a dangerous person. Come on, somebody. And you just get in that mood to just fully obey whatever your little old heart tells you. And what do you say? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. You only go around here once. My kids are almost grown up. Everybody's coming in from out of town. I don't know how much longer my dad's going to be with me. And on and on and on and on and on and on. And you just don't get the present. You get the paper. You get the bow. You get the card. And you get a latte on the way home. Come on, somebody. And you just had yourself a hundred dollar day, if not more. And you still owe it. You just charged it. So you're going to pay that plus interest. But you're happy to do it. And you feel good. Mm, I got mama. I got, I got Sally. What do you see what I got dad? I mean, just throwing money all over the place. And just happy to do it. Come on, say happy to do it. Say, and... and Whenever the Holy Ghost wants to get you into a different place, there's got to be something that happens where he's able to quicken you from the inside. If all the money you ever give has to come from an appeal, from the outside in, then there's never going to be any gauge on your value from God being able to quicken something to you on the inside. Most people who give money to churches, the pastor comes out and says, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let's take up our tithes and offerings. Oh, honey, do you bring a pen? Do you bring a checkbook? Huh. Okay. And you're reminded to give, and you're kind of reminded to do that from the outside in. What God wants is to be able to quicken you wherever you are. From the inside. See, whenever you begin to be quickened from the inside, give that waitress an extra 30%. Give that man asking for some money. Give him a $5 bill. Whenever God's able to get to you from the inside, that's whenever you're moving from partial to complete obedience. Come on, somebody give God. And God's going to quicken you beyond the regular tithe. The tithe is what you owe. You don't give your tithe, you owe it. You don't sow your tithe, you pay it. You owe God 10%. But the money that you want to get back in the harvest comes out of that 90%. That's where the blessing is. When you go beyond the tithe, and, and, and God wants to be able to quicken you more. When you're out and about, just shock some people with some goodness. You know, when that waitress comes over and you know she needs it, and you're worried about giving her 15, drop her, drop her a 20. Well, you don't think God would ever do that. God's going to start you out somewhere to stretch you into letting you know he needs more to work with to pour back on you. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. But it has to be God wants to get into spontaneous. Let down your nets. Well, it didn't make any sense in that moment. It makes sense when you come Sunday morning because you know it's coming. You're prepared for it. You might even have the check all written out. So they come out, the pastor stands and says, okay, tithes and offerings, no problem. 
you're ready for that. Even if you're visiting a church somewhere, you're ready for that. But here's what you're not ready for. For the Holy Ghost, at any given time, in the course of your walk, to say, hey, you know, you know that hat you really like? That hat, that $300 hat that you had up there you haven't worn for a while? I want you to give that to Sally at the church. I rebuke the devil right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> See, the test, of, the test of going from partial to full is whenever he can quicken you on the inside. Come on, put your hands up. Say, everything I own is a seed. My clothes, I wear seed. I drive seed. I eat seed. All my possessions. My flat screen, my old round screen, every piece of equipment I have is a seed. It's an extension of me. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. See, we don't mind the organized giving. We're ready for that. And sometimes we even fight that. That's why some people don't like revival every night. They, they think, well, dear God, if I go three nights in a row, that's going to cost me some serious offering. And then you have to ask yourself, when's the last time you even listened to the Holy Ghost instead of yourself? The reason most people lack today is because they're, they're listening to themselves. You know, the, the Holy Ghost isn't the only person talking inside of you. You're talking to yourself. That's why you get fearful. That's why you get depressed. Because you buy into what you're hearing. You listen to the Holy Ghost, you don't end up in Depressionville. You don't end up in Pityville. Come on, somebody. When you listen to him, man, you got hope. You know something's about to change. You're sitting on the edge of your seat, man. How is God going to do this? How's he going to get me off medication? How's he going to get me out of broke? My husband left and left me with three kids and no, how's God going to get me out of this? Someone says, yeah, but you got to give some time to be human. Not much time. Not much time. Jesus don't want you just sitting there sulking for weeks and months and years. The sooner you beat the devil, the happier you'll be. Come on, see, I got to beat him quick. See, the answer with God is responding quickly. It's a quick, spontaneous, that's what sets you apart from even most believers. It's, it's how fast can you respond. I mean, even in miracle services, we have to wait sometimes an hour for someone to, it's me, I'm the one with the neck, you know. A lady, I called that out over an hour ago. Yeah, but I don't want to come up in front of all these people. No, if it's a real weird word, I can understand. Some words are pretty personal. We had a word where I said, someone has pain shooting up your rectum. It's pretty painful. Well, nobody answered for two hours. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I understand that's a little personal. Finally, a lady came up and she said, I'm the lady that has the pain you know. I said, I know. And she got healed. But, but see... How do you move out of partial obedience into full obedience? By letting the Holy Ghost able to quicken you at any moment. And I'm telling you, surely as night follows day, if you'll begin to move in that direction, especially with your money. Because see, you want him, you want to be quickened when it's receiving time. How many want to receive quickly? then God wants you to be able to give quickly. You don't want to mess around with that blind eye. You want to see now. You don't want to mess around with that deaf ear. You want to see now. You don't want to mess around with that pain in your back. You want healed now. So you want to hear God now for you. But God wants you to hear now for him. Oh, come on, somebody. And when you can begin to show God that you're just as quick. Come on, say the word quick. Come on, say Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. That same spirit, same spirit that, raised Christ, that raised Christ, he'll quicken your body. He'll quicken your senses. He'll quicken your spirit. And quicken means right now. 
see, when he quickens you, it means don't wait around. And if you can begin to show God that you're fast on the draw. How long was Paul and Silas on that wall before they started to praise him? Were they depressed for three days? Then they said, we might as well praise him. They got beat, they got hung on the wall, and they moved into praise. How long before Daniel prayed in the den? Did he wait after he thought, those lions are, oh, I said, oh, those lions. No, he got hit that den. He's praying. He's, it's already, what, because he was practicing in the palace. He did it in the den. He practiced in the dark, and he, or in the light, and he worked it in the dark. It's how quick you do it. It's how quick. And sometimes we're not that quick and we have, we, then we have to get a delayed blessing. You say, but I'm not used to giving certain amounts of money or if God wants me to give away a piece of property or, or, or a boat or, or clothes or shoes or... There's people that have stuff in their closet they'll never wear. You have seed in your house that is waiting to be given so money can hit your bank account. You'd rather go to Craigslist and eBay and get 35 cents for a shirt. Come on, somebody. Than to sew it and get $35,000. It's moving into complete obedience. All the nets. Not one net. Come on, say not one. Not one. But all. all. Quickly. Quickly. It's, it's God being able to quicken you from the inside. We was at a church out n near Dallas a couple years ago. And I had, I had just gotten this really nice watch. It wasn't a really expensive watch, but it was just a nice watch. It wasn't over the top expensive, but it was a nice watch. Moderate, moderately priced. And, and I liked it. And so we was in this service, in this church for four days. And this lady came to the altar on the first night after God was moving, healing people. She said, my God, if I could just get my husband here. She said, he needs healed so bad. But she said, he cannot stand preachers. I said, well, that's not a good thing, ma'am. That's not a good thing. She said, he's been hurt and he's been so betrayed and disillusioned. And, you know, they're all after this and they're all say this and all. I said, ma'am, you know, we're all, we're all wor a work in progress. I said, you know, we got feet of clay. We got this treasure. I went through that. And she said, yeah, yeah, but if I could just get him here. I said, well, let's just pray that he comes. So the next night, there he is, sitting right next to her in the service. Big guy. You know, and uh, so after the service was over, I went back to see how our products were selling back at the table. I said, how are we doing tonight? And he come walking back and he said to me, hey, he said, my wife really thinks a lot of you. I said, hey, you know. I just, you know, don't what I do. I said, your wife's a nice lady. He said, well, I happen to notice that watch you're wearing. I said, oh, this, yeah. He said, yeah, I happen. He said, I like watches. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking, get your eyes off of my watch. <laughs> you know, he said, I'm a collector. I said, really? Really? He said, do you mind if I see your watch? I said, no, sure. Sure. So I took my watch off on a hand to him. He's looking at it. He goes, this is a nice watch. I'm thinking, I know. Just hurry and give it back. <laughs> now, I knew already, I knew already then in what was going on here. I could feel that, you know, well, then sings my soul. I hear the thunder rolling. Come on, somebody. I hear the thunder rolling. I, I hear that thunder rolling. I'm thinking, I'm in trouble already. You know, and I, I hadn't gotten a whole lot of time to enjoy this watch. I just knew I liked it a whole lot. So he handed it back. He said, that is really nice. I said, that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, and I put it back on. I said, yeah, and he said, would you pay for that? I said, oh, we don't want to talk about that. I said, it's just moderate, you know, just moderate. He said, I don't have anything like that. I said, well, you know, there's all kind of watches out there. <laughs> 
So I walked away. He walked away. I didn't get back to my hotel room and the Holy Ghost said, you give him that watch tomorrow night. I said, Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, this, this is getting really serious here. I said, I give you my heart. He said, I know I got your heart, but I want your watch. <laughs> I give you my time, I know, but I want your watch. It was that, that clear. And I thought, oh. So I thought if I give him the watch tomorrow, I got two more nights of church with an empty hand. What a crazy way to think. But I knew I had to do what he said. Because it was, look at me, quickened. So the next night, he comes to church. He's sitting up to his wife. And I walked over, took my watch off. I said, sir, I said, the Holy Ghost told me to give you this watch. He said, the Holy Ghost told you to give me that watch. I said, the Holy Ghost told me to give you that watch. I tried to hide all my tears. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know. And I handed that. Giving isn't always easy. He likes a cheerful giver. I'm not cheerful all the time. I try to be obedient all the time, and then the cheerfulness catches up later. Sometimes you're happy up front. Come on, somebody. Sometimes it takes a while for happy to find you. Come on, say amen. Come on, say when the harvest comes, happy shows up. Don't ever get condemned for that. Only the people that are cheerful all the time are people that never are stretched into giving anything large. Of no sacrifice. So he took the watch and he said, I can't thank you enough. He said, I, he said, I was telling my wife if I could just get a watch like that. He's just going on and on and on, just rubbing it all in. I said, well, I'm glad you like it. I said, yeah, bless you, all that. And he sat down there and I could see him the whole service. He wasn't even listening to what I was saying. <laughs> He's back there looking at that watch and rubbing it, you know, and looking at it. And he's just as happy the joy of the Lord hit him, you know, all that. He was healed in the beginning of the meeting. Come on, say amen. So the next night, he's not in church. And his wife comes up to me afterwards and she said, you've changed my husband's life. I said, well, is he so healed he don't come to church or what? She said, he just... Whatever he had against church and preachers, she said, I'm amazed at what's happened to him since you gave him that watch. I said, ma'am, if it's doing that much good, I'm happy. No, I don't have nothing on my arm. It seems like I'm the loser here. Come on, somebody. I gave a watch to a guy who don't even come back to church the next day. This appears to be, you know, money down the wrong hole. But all you can do is err on the side of obedience. All you can do is say, God, I want to drop all my nets. I don't want to partially obey you like uh, Saul did with King Agag and the bleeding sheep. Where he altered the plan and did it his way. He partially obeyed. Partial creates a partial harvest. So the next night was the last night and... And she comes to church, and he's not with her on the last night. And so after the meeting was over, I went back to check out at our table. And she comes walking back, and she said, hey, she said, you know, he can't make it tonight. She said, but he wanted me to give you this check for $5,000. She said, you know, he just felt bad you giving him that watch. I said, he didn't feel half as bad as I felt giving that watch. <laughs> and she said, here's a check for $5,000. I didn't pay 5000 for it. That wasn't the point. The point was God said, when you respond quickly from the inside, when you let me quicken you on the inside, I'll respond fast from the outside. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. See, now, it don't seem like much, but that was a $5,000 visitation. You say, what did you do with that money? I put it in my pocket quickly. 
My grandmother said, if I ever hear you taking money for preaching, she says, I'll find you and I will, don't you ever. But she said, if people give you money, receive it quickly. <laughs> so she had this thing between taking and receiving in her mind, you know, that was, it was okay to receive, but not to take. She wasn't into the violent take of, she wasn't getting to that. And so whenever you see this moving into full obedience, it matters how you respond to God on the inside. Because if all you ever do is hear another telephone, turn your, you know, hear another preacher saying, I need help. Now the Holy Ghost can use that, that's great. But how about someday you come to church and, and nobody has to say anything to you. And you just say, I heard God say this. And I heard God, and you begin to get a habitual lifestyle like that. And you begin to give it to the church like that. And you begin to give it at the restaurants like that. Come on. And you begin to send some money to your daughter at college. And she says, Mama, I didn't even ask you for any. I didn't, you don't have to ask me. God told me to give that to you from the inside. And when you be, oh, come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. And when you begin to respond on the inside like that, I mean, there's no limit to what, now, now God knows what? That there's a clear line to your spirit. Now God knows he can trust that line. Abraham didn't have a real Bible. He didn't have, you know, what word did he stand on? The word that came spirit to spirit. He didn't have the, the tangible word of God we have. He staggered not at the promise, what, that he heard what? Spirit to spirit. The same way God's trying to talk to you and quicken you. And that's a sign that what? That you are able to be trusted with more. But if you always have to be told from the outside. If you always have to be reminded. Then God's thinking, I can't get through. And then all of a sudden, we, I had just, you know, a couple weeks ago, I was in my garage, I had a big John Deere tractor and a pressure washer and a lawnmower. And here's what I thought to my natural mind. I don't really need this anymore. Uh, I'm going to put this on eBay. I, I'm going to sell this. I can get probably a few thousand dollars for it. So I called one of my elders and I said, do you mind if I put this stuff out on, he owns a blueberry farm in Tampa grows blueberries and I said do you mind if I put this out on your farm put a sign on it and he said no nah, I'll come over and pick it up for you so him and his son come out in the big truck and they come out and they're loading the John Deere tractor up on the truck and uh, put the lawnmower in there and take the pressure washer up there and the Holy Ghost said you're not selling this you tell them they can have it so when the Holy Ghost said that I went like this because sometimes when you see me leaning down like this there used to be an old song that says, it hurts so bad. Come on, somebody. Yes. And I, I just bend down and think, oh, man. See, because it's unexpected. I wasn't counting on it. When you come to a church meeting, you're already prepared for an offering or your tithe. You've got to get out of giving God what you owe him and start blessing God. Shocking God that you're responding to his voice of what he wants. And I said to myself, Lord, I, I, you know, man, that's a nice tractor. That's a nice lawnmower. That's a, almost a brand new pressure washer. Sometimes you're not sure if God can see everything that he wants you to give. <laughs> you want God to kind of get it better. You want to take another survey of this stuff. So I picked my head up, and this gentleman's name is Aubrey. And I said, hey, Aubrey, I said, you know what, just take it. I said, I don't want to put no sign on it. I don't want to sell it. I just want you to have it. He said, Pastor, I know, just take it. Just take it. And I'm watching my body just do what I don't want. <laughs> just take it. Now, my flesh is saying, keep it. My flesh is saying, okay, give the tractor, but don't give the pressure washer. Oh, come on, somebody. See, your flesh is always trying to get you to do some and not all. So then you reap some and never get all. Come on, put your hands up. I'm putting down all the nets. Come on. From the inside out. Quickly. I'm going to respond. Outside the church. Inside the church. 
I'm going to move quickly. Come on, somebody give God a shout. And then there's this thing in the church that's called, it doesn't matter how much you give, it's the heart. It doesn't matter how much, pastor, it's the thought behind it. Really. What chapter is that in? Luke 6, 38 says, with what measure? With what measure you give, that's the visitation you're getting back. You say, but I'm getting a hundredfold. You're getting a hundredfold of a thimble. You're not getting a hundredfold of a truckload. And if you're signing up for the hundredfold, why not sign up for a big hundredfold? It, it does make a difference. Now, you say, I don't have much. Well, then you give out of the, the lack that you have. The sacrifice is comparative and relative to where you are. But you can't have the, the amount you have or what, you know, make up for it in other areas. You know, I'm, I'm flying out, out of the airport, Tampa airport, probably three, sometimes four times a week. So I'm always tipping the sky caps. You know, I, I believe you should give money to people that help you. And I'm, I'm usually having, pressing the clock, so it's nothing for me to put a 20 down or you know, 30 down. I'm, I'm pretty generous because these guys really helped me get to my plane. So a few months ago, I, I was running really, really late and I happened to be really, really tired that day. And I went to tip the sky cab and I wasn't looking real clearly or seeing real clearly, a little bit of both. And I, I went down through my money and I thought that I was giving him 10 ones. Well, in one of those ones was a $100 bill. So I didn't realize I had slipped him about $109 to carry two suitcases 20 feet. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I, I didn't know it. I didn't know because I thought, hell, I'm just going real quick, you know. Like, uh, and he looked at me like he, when he got it, he went, he went, well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm thinking, boy, that guy must be in bad shape to be there. <laughs> Thanking me for 10 bucks that bad. So I got on the plane, got to my hotel, whatever's in the hotel room, and I was taking my money out of my pocket and just went through it. And I thought, well, wait a minute. You know, I had $300 bills there. There's only two. Where did the $100 bill go? I didn't spend no $100 between here and there, there and here. What happened here? And then it hit me. I thought, like, oh, my God. <laughs> I started to feel sick. Come on, somebody. I started to feel real. And I'm thinking, that's why that guy was so happy. I thought, oh my God. Now I'm thinking, what do I do? I can't call the airport. I can't file a complaint with the sky cabs. I can't say he took it. And I was like, I need that. And the Lord said, but you have two other $100 bills. I know, but I had three. Come on, somebody help me over here. I said, that was an accidental seed. And here's what the Holy Ghost said to me in my hotel room. Leave it go. Release it. Just release it. You know, release it. It's easy to say, just release it. Just release it. I was bothered. And I had to go do meetings. I had to get right. So I tried to get as right as I could get. And I'm thinking, I'm having trouble with this, Lord. Till I went home and went back to the airport and all the sky caps, Reverend! Hey, Reverend! Gotcha, Reverend! Get that, Reverend! Hey, Reverend! Then I said to myself, that's what you get for sow and seed. <laughs> Come on, I got an accidental harvest that I still enjoy to this day. See, 
What's that mean? Don't tell me it don't matter how much. He didn't show all of his teeth because I gave him 10 ones. I wasn't bothered because what David said, I won't give God nothing, but don't cost me something. And I'm serious. When I pull into that terminal, if it's Southwest or American, or I think they get together in a prayer meeting and they find out who the givers are. <laughs> I think there's a church at the airport. Because <laughs> they'll yell, hey, hey, man. Oh, how you doing? Hey, hey, glow. Can I get that back? Don't you pick that up? So I said to the Lord, do I have to give all these guys a hundred bucks now? <laughs> it matters. Don't you let anybody tell you. Don't make up your own stuff. I said, don't make up your own stuff. So many people just, well, I think the Lord understands. Really? I think the Lord knows my situation. See, the Lord's trying to get you out of doomsday into payday. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. He's trying to give you a financial visitation like you've never had. It isn't hard for God to give you a financial breakthrough. But he wants to make sure that when you get that breakthrough, it's just not something you said, well, amen, I'm at the mercy of God. All the people that got mercy in the New Testament were people that weren't covenant. Mercy healings and faith healings are different. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. They were all people, non-covenant people. He hadn't gone to the cross yet. Jesus didn't heal one Christian. Everybody he healed was what? At the mercy, at the mercy, at the mercy. He'd say, go your way, your faith made you. Faith in what? The mercy. Not faith in the finished work. Oh, come on, somebody help me. Come on, somebody help me. We have faith in the finished work. And that finished work is all inclusive. Living out your days in strength. Never losing your mind. Having everybody under your tree. Never losing, no dementia, no Alzheimer's, no memory loss. I mean, breaking the curse of the gene pool the whole way back. Come on, somebody. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11, go ahead, go there, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. When you get into full obedience, I mean, it is. Oh my. Chapter 11, are you there? Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after how many days? Well, bread's supposed to get soggy in the water, break apart, and become fish food. If you leave bread in the water, it gets soggy. He says here, if you cast bread in the water after many days, give portion to seven also to, to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the earth. It's protection from what everybody else is afraid of. There's too many people that are in great churches and great faith people that are, that are buying into the whole doomsday prepper. How to live underground. How to buy a steel box, a Coleman stove. They must not have read the story about the ravens that'll come and feed you, about manna that'll fall. God's about to outdo himself like never before. Someone said, Pastor Billy, did you hear that the TB virus is mutating? It's no longer, you know, the, the, the vaccine no longer works. Do you know about the genetically modified food, GMO, GMO, GMO? 
You know, most of the restaurants use GMO food. GMO food. There is so much fear out there of what's coming. The only thing that I know that's on the horizon is a wave of righteousness. Of creative miracles. We were having lunch here the last time we were here at, at this Joe's Crab House, Stone House Crab, Stone Crabs. And they brought the little pincers to the table. And I made a comment, I said, these guys gave their life for us today. Thank you, Lord, these crabs gave their life. And Pastor Stan said, they didn't give their life, they just gave their one arm. <laughs> so, I didn't, I didn't know that. And he said, they cut the one arm off, they take that to the restaurant, and they throw the other crab back, and then he grows out an arm. Oh, I'm sitting there having revival at that moment. Because I said to myself, if animals are a lower species than we are. Oh, man. I mean, mineral life, plant life, animal life, man, God. If we're a higher form of life next to God, and a crab can grow a leg. And a salamander can grow a tail. And a fish can grow a fin. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We have people in our healing files of lungs that have grown back, stomachs, appendix, gallbladders. It's amazing. What's on the horizon is the greatest glory the church has ever seen. And God is looking for churches that will accept it. He wants me to ask you here at Words of Life, will you accept a greater glory? Come on, somebody help me today. See, when you fully obey Him, the reward is this, this massive assurance that you're able to carry and communicate because God wants to strategically place you in crazy places where you're the one going to say don't do yourself any harm you're the one going to keep people from falling apart because you're sitting on a pile of seed come on you're expecting a supernatural harvest you know there's a wave coming that's bigger than you've ever seen Come on, say payday's on the way. Not doomsday. Payday. See, my grandfather, when he was teaching me how to fish, he'd always, you know, he'd throw the line out there. We'd catch a little fish, and he'd say, Now, when you get a little fish, you kiss that little fish. And you say, go get your brother. <laughs> and he said, you throw that fish out there and he'll go get your brother. I said, really? I'm just a little guy. He, I said, he said, he'll go get his brother. If you tell him, go get his brother. So I said, go get your brother. Then you catch a bigger fish. He said, you kiss that fish. You say, go get your dad. <laughs> I said, Pap, he said, he'll go get his dad. His dad's out there. So I'd kiss that fish and I'd throw that fish back in the water and a person pulling about a 20 inch bass, 25 inch carp or catfish, big thing, you know, and he'd say, nah, there's one out there. He's like, tell that guy to go get his old man. Tell that guy. And my grandfather was slowly teaching me, get it and give it back. See, the big word on the internet today, the big new buzzword is selfie. You're going to hear that word selfie in the next few weeks like you've never heard it. Selfie. Come on, say selfie. It's whenever you take your, your, uh, your, your phone and you take a picture of yourself and then you post yourself on Facebook. It's called selfie. It's the biggest new buzzword on the internet, on Facebook. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. See, it's all about you. The whole world's focused on you. And God is saying, I'm trying to get you to focus on a harvest on a revival 
that cannot be stopped. Come on, give God a big shout here tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him praise. I was with a pastor in California right before he went to the hospital for tests. And we're sitting in his house and I said, uh, well, you're going tomorrow for tests. He said, yeah, I'm going, but they won't find nothing. I thought that was interesting. Not that I'm going, but he added, they won't find nothing. It just hit me strong. He didn't say, I hope they don't find nothing. He just, he said it so sharp. And so he said, I'm going tomorrow to get some tests. He said, they won't find nothing. It, it, you know, faith jumps out of people and onto you. It's, it's, it's so refreshing. Yes. And he wants to be able to place you around your family, around some of your friends that are just yinging and yanging. Come on, somebody. They don't know what bling is. They don't know how to spell bling. They don't know what bling is. They don't have any bling in their whole medicine cabinet. Come on, somebody. And they're just talking about, did you see this and did you see that? And they're always worried about how much some ball player's making. And, you know, and here you are. Here's you. Man, you have seed in the ground. You're protected from everything they say that's coming. Man, you don't blink. You don't look left or right. And you know that there's a happy harvest. Come on, say a happy harvest. That's keeping you from the germs. You don't get A1, D1, B1. You don't get salmonella. It doesn't say if you drink any dead things. It says when you drink. It doesn't say if you might get food poisoning at Chili's. It says when you do. Or some restaurant. Come on, say amen. What's it say? It ain't going to have any impact on you. Not just because you believe in the Lord, but because you have seed in the ground that's protecting you from the things that are planning against you. Long before your confession, God wants your seed to have a head start on your battle. You can never let opportunities and begin to outgrow having to give when you're in the building. You look like God don't speak to you by giving money in your bedroom or in the kitchen. If he can speak to you at the mall, come on somebody. How many heard the Holy Ghost at the mall? Yeah, buy three dresses. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. That's a confirmation. Buy that necklace to go with it. Praise God. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. Mm. Mm. Anything else, Holy Ghost? Is there anything else, Holy Ghost? Get shoes to go with it. Praise God. Come on, say, I'm fully surrendered, mate. Come on. I had to obey God. You paid how much for that Miami Heat seat? How? Well, pastor, God spoke to me. Oh! And he told me he wanted me to take my son while he was home from college. That that was a special connecting, bonding time. So I felt that, I, I just was trying to obey the Lord. Well, you did a good job. You did a good, was it a good game? Amen. Man, we won. Great. Everybody scored great. You know, I mean, it's only $1,000 total one night for everything. $1,000 night. I think that's worth it. You know what I believe is worth it? Every soul, every broken body. Come on. Every lost person. Come on, somebody. Every, come on. And wouldn't that be pretty bad to think that we would suffer longer in lack, not because we don't give, but because we don't fully give. Peter did give, and remember, he did obey with one that. So it wasn't like he said, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. He said, okay, he gave one. 
Wouldn't that be sad to find out? See, everybody says, well, he blesses some 30, 60, 90, 100. I don't want to be on that 30. I don't want to be down on that 30 thing. I am not joining the 30 club. Come on, somebody. I'm not joining no 60 club. No, not when they're off. I'm... got to expect it. Expect means look for it. Recalibrate your faith every day you get up. Could today be the day, Lord? Every time it says you got mail, oh my God, that might be it. Your phone rings when you go to your mailbox, when there's a knock at your door. Every time I see lightning, I think he's coming. Every time I hear thunder, man, it's rapture time. All is ready. All is ready. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Come on. So you got to begin to show God your, because whenever you expect what you're saying is, I believe you. Why don't most people pray? They don't believe there's anybody there to listen to him. He that comes to God must believe that he is. It matters how much. It matters how quick. It matters the fact it's coming from the inside. And we have people give money all the time from because we ask. But then there's people that come up and just slip you something in your hand. And they say, hey, God spoke to me. And sometimes that gift is given like that, even though sometimes it's a lesser gift when you know it's coming from the inside. Then when God sees you can do that, he can get rid of some of your clothes and some of your jewelry and some of your stuff you're never going to use again or wear again. I like that dress. Lady, you were 16 when you had that dress. <laughs> you're 53 right now. And even if, you, even if you could fit into it, you'd look silly. Yeah, but it means something special. Really? So you're connected to sentimental journey. Half the stuff where you are, we get so connected to what's the Bible saying, Colossians 3 1? Set your affections. Get disconnected from anything down here, come on, that you can't walk away from. Do not buy a jacket you can't give away. Don't live in a house you can't turn the keys over. You get sold out to Jesus. Come on, his word. Come on, somebody. You got to get emotionally connected to the Lord because when, you, when your heart gets knit with his, the greatest move words of life has ever seen is about to hit this church. They're going to need some of you to step up and throw down all your nets. You have been partially blessed, but God wants you to get more than a boatload. Come on, somebody. But there are signs in the sky in the spiritual realm. There's a whirling and a swirling that God's about to release his audible voice. You're about to start seeing some things. Whenever you begin to say, Lord, I will drop every net I got, that's all God needs to hear to release. I mean, how many, how many could get a little easier if you heard an audible voice? How many admit if I saw an angel, this would be a lot easier? Come on, somebody. None of that is being kept from you. But those all require trust. And there's nothing where you earn trust more with God than when you give your seed. Has somebody come and she baked me this, these cookies, you know? I said, ma'am, I don't want to offend you, 
I don't like those cookies. I, I, I don't eat that. I said, I'm trying to get a little healthy. So the next thing, then she baked me some vegetable dish. I said, ma'am, really, I'm not, I got food. I got anything I have food. I, I can't take vegetable lasagna down to the bank. Come on, somebody. I, I appreciate the thought, but how much did this vegetable dish cost you? Well, she said, I just gave you some. I made a couple big trays full. I saw so you didn't give me all of it. No, she said, I really didn't have you in mind. Oh, you gave me leftovers. <laughs> this is getting interesting, ma'am. I appreciate that. Now, I have leftover lasagna that I don't need. I said, ma'am, why don't you just write a check out? So a see. Just make this easy on everybody. You mean money? Yeah, money. That's, yeah, money. You put money into this, why not just put money in? That's just a lot easier. No drama. You know? I, that way I don't have to think about, you know, I don't know you. I don't know how you cook. I don't know what you use. I don't want to have to do deliverance on the food. Come out! Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, she meant well. Why is it so hard to let down all your nets? Why is it so hard to fully obey? How you know you're in for a big blessings whenever you can get past the discomfort? It's a battle. At every level, it's a battle. When I was giving that watch away, when I gave a Mercedes Benz away, I never even got to drive it. I was speaking in a morning service one time and I said, you know, someday I saw that I, I was taking my children to a movie and they, in one of these little movies they had a rabbit. A rabbit was driving a little green Mercedes. A really weird thing. And I said, man, I'd like to have one of those. It wasn't even a real car. And I just said it one time in a service. I said, I'd like to, someday we're going to get me one of those green Mercedes Benz. The next day, a lady called my office. She said, I heard what you said. I'm going to have that car delivered to your office. I'm going to have it serviced and the title. I'll have you the title within three days. You know, and I thought, you know, I thought, wow, I mean, that, I wasn't even serious. And I'm thinking, what if I get serious with God? <laughs> I just kind of threw that out there. So a couple of days later, they delivered this car. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to drive this car. So I had the title, and I put the title in my coat pocket. Mistake number one. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and I went to church, mistake number two. <laughs> and we had a great ministry time, and... I, I was ready to close the service. And I just felt this check. I said, you know, there's somebody here that needs a special miracle. I didn't have a clue what was about to happen. This lady comes crying up alongside the room, crying. I said, ushers, help her up here. And she came and she fell in front of me. And I said, ma'am, are you okay? She said, I love God so much. I want to be in church so much. I don't have no way to get here. I started crying right there. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. No, no. I'm thinking I didn't even get to drive it yet. I didn't even get to sit in it yet. You know? And I didn't even get to show the title. I was going to show the title and say, look what happened to everybody. And it was right here. I said, no, ma'am. Ma'am, look at me, ma'am. What, what do you mean, ma'am? Holy Ghost says, you know what she means. 
you, you know what she means. She needs a car and you have one. I said, but that's my car, Lord. I didn't even get to drive it yet. He said, I'm afraid if you drive it, you'd never give it. Now, I, I don't know how this works with you, but I watched this hand. I watched it like it wasn't even my hand. I watched it reach into my jacket. <laughs> and I'm thinking something has overpowered my body. I'm under the control, I'm under the influence. I'm inebriated with another power. A crazy person would do this. And I watched me get this title out to a lady who probably didn't even have a bicycle. I said, ma'am, here's a car for you. I'm gonna give you a Mercedes Benz. Man, people got up out of their chairs. Everybody wanted to get prayer all of a sudden. <laughs> give me a blessing, pastor. <laughs> yeah, never drove it. Never sat in it. Handed her a title. And she said, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming to church today. Never saw her again. This fully obeying stuff, it's tough. But what's come in place of that? I believe I stand here in a great church today as part of the harvest. Come on, somebody. Come on. I believe a lot of the miracles we're seeing today that are very special is a product of fully, not that you understand it. Get your family ready. And wife, your husband may not fully understand it, but you've got to position yourself to bless the whole family. Yes. I'm not asking you tonight that logically it doesn't make sense. The Bible's not supposed to. It's supposed to make faith, right? And to fully obey where your finances, your possessions, your clothes, your jewelry, Anything you have that's an extension of you. Be open for him to quicken it. Now that ugly jacket you have that you don't even like, come on somebody. Come on with the buttons that looks like it's in the Beatle day, the 60s or something. I'm not talking about something like that that you don't like, you don't want. And God is tired of people dropping stuff off at the church, rabbits with one ear. Come on somebody. Baby dolls that used to talk. Come on, somebody. These baby dolls need a miracle to talk again. And then they act like they gave you this special gift. Oh, this was special. It don't walk anymore, ma'am. This here my daughter had. There's no tail. I know we've had it for 44 years. And God spoke to me to give you this junk. No, he didn't. Now watch this. Here's where we're wrapping this up. I wish above all things that thou wouldest. In the ninja, you put money ahead of your health. I'm about to say something. I want you to pay attention. Think about it. I've watched this. I'm not speaking out of an opinion. I've, I see it all the time. People that get blessed with money, their ailments disappear. It's amazing what a lot of ailments are caused by lack and no hope for increase. You know, it don't take much to look ahead at your dad and his hard work or your grandfather or 
or your skill level or your paycheck. It don't take much at some point to figure out once you reach a certain age, hey, this is as good as it gets. So they tell you that. You know, when you're 19 and 20, I mean, you're going to shoot better than Jordan, putt better than Tiger. Come on, somebody. You're going to be a better movie star than Harrison Ford. But, you know, as the years creep on and opportunity subsides, the options you have begin to dwindle a little bit. And then you begin to see that net pay and that gross. And then you begin to, all of a sudden, something happens with your blood pressure. People losing their mind. You lose your mind whenever you realize, I can't pay for anything. I can't leave my children anything. It breaks you up on the inside when you can't help the people that you love. Your cellular structure, your lymph nodes, your first line of defense before it hits the bloodstream, your brain cells. We are wired to control, to dominate, to be in dominion. There is a global shift of wealth taking place as we sit here tonight. I said there's a shift. And it's coming to your house. And when it hits your house, you're going to be amazed. Your cataracts aren't going to be cataracting anymore. Your blood pressure is all of a sudden abnormal. Man, those bad knees with no cartilages. Man, I'm going to the mall. Praise God. That bad back. Get this cane out of here. I got $300,000 in the bank. Man, get that cane. You say, you say... You say money can heal. Money can make you happy. And happy can release a medicine inside of your bones. And now if you're here tonight and you're just hitchhiking, there's no guarantee for you. You're hanging out the church and hanging out with givers and hanging out with people that are fully obeying there's no guarantee for you you're trying to get in on the group rate come on somebody <laughs> you got to really this is a moment right here that you want to make sure that you hear the master it'd be a sad day for you to figure out one day that your giving could have broken the crutches of polio and MS I've watched, I can't, how many people over the years, seriously, have sowed seed, different amounts of money, and we've watched stage four cancer. More people that's in this room go from death's door and just mysteriously cancer gone after, after sowing a seed. I don't fully understand the connection with money and health tonight. I'm not going to kid you and say that I do. Many times I go to that green room back there and I'm just like, Lord, I, I just want to learn more. I always want to be honest with the people because I know there's a lot of grabbers today. But I can testify to you tonight, there is a connection. I said there's a connection between your money and your health. I wish above all, it seems like your health would be more important. Because people say, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health. That's not what Jesus said. It seems like it should be, I wish above all things that you would be healthy and prosper. Then say that. I wish above all things. It's like the thief cometh not for to, not to kill right away, but what? To steal. He's a thief first. His first thinking is, I'm going to steal. God's first thinking is, i got to get you rich. In the spirit and in your pocketbook. So many diseases are connected to the nervous disorder. Come on, put your hands right here. Your whole system is set up by peace. 
peace controls. Now, the doctors don't use the word peace. They use the word blood pressure. And for kidneys, they're, they're, create, they're creating level. All these different organs have a pressure to it that's connected directly to take it easy, slow down, get the right nutrients. Because stress removes nutrients from your organs. It takes stuff right out of your blood. Stress drains you from vitamin B every day. What's creating more stress than anything? On marriages, on health, is lack. And you're thinking, but where am I going to get it? Where am I going to get it? Where can I get it? Your wealth is so important to God. It's more than just a, oh, Lord, I want to be wealthy. I want to be part of that Abrahamic covenant. It's way more than that. You're, you're the one called to break the curse in your family line. Think about, think about if you would have started out in life and you would have had something handed down from two generations. Most of us, and myself included, we started out behind the eight ball. A lot of love. A lot of faith. How about the revivals of yesteryear? Without naming them. Great miracles. But if you look at the film of all these people, Farmers, poor. I'm telling you what's about to hit Florida is the miracles and the money coming together. It's not just going to be walking out of here with no back brace. It's not going out, no back brace and a wallet full of money. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him praise all over this place. You say, but what if I don't have what you're asking? Then have the want to. Let God know you have a want to. Let God know you have a desire to. He gives seed to the... Right. So let God know that, hey man, I have a want to. But until then, give out of everything you have that you can. Go through your closet. Go through your jewelry box. Go through everything you got because it is seed. Microwaves, toasters, computers, videos your children don't watch anymore. Donate them. Give them to the church, Salvation Army, Goodwill, the neighbor. Get that seed out of your house. Let God see a steady flow coming out of, don't wait for someone to call you and say, hey, we need this. You know, look what happened in the Philippines. Look what happened up in Chicago in a moment. God said he wants to protect you from the evil that is to come. The storms are going around your house. The disease is going around your house. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody give God a shout tonight. Somebody give God a shout tonight. Somebody give God a shout tonight. Stay standing, stay standing. Come on, put your hands high to the, high to the sky. Come on, high to the sky. Come on, say, God is never down, he's always up. Prayers don't go out, they go up. Praise goes up. Prayer goes up. Power comes down. Mm. Mm. Come on, every hand up all over. I want you to think about this tonight. I didn't share this for this to be another quick teaching. I want you to get a hold of this. Full obedience versus partial. That's the challenge tonight. Each of us, that we have to answer that in a different way. Hmm. Hmm. 
Mm. The greatest covenant you can make tonight to position yourself for healing, for blessing, is that vow you would make to God. Lord, I vow. I want to let down all the nets. I want to obey you completely. Not partially, but completely. I want to obey you quickly. I want to obey you exactly. I want to trust you, Lord, that I'm headed for payday, not doomsday. No fear here and no panic here. You're my shield, my glory, and the lifter of my head. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and me. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Several, several years ago, a girl came into a meeting. She came to the altar and she said, I need an overhaul. I said, what's that mean? She said, I'm broke. My back hurts. And I feel like I'm going to be an old maid. I said, how old are you? She said, 32. I said, why do you feel like you're going to be an old maid? You're 32. And she said, I don't know what to do. As true as I'm talking to you, I heard the Holy Spirit say, you tell her to sow a penny a month to seven major ministries. She'll be healed, have a great job, and be married in six months. I don't mean to bozo, I mean to Boaz. Come on, somebody. I said, ma'am, here's the word of the Lord. See, that, that word of the Lord is, do you partially obey it? Is it just a good idea? Is it a prophecy or a suggestion? Is it time to taste the tea or swallow the tea bag? I said, here's what the Lord is saying. Now, she wanted something to happen right there. God wanted to see something come from her. I said, I want you to find seven major ministries and I want you to sow a penny a month for the next six months. And here's the deal. You're going to get healed. You're going to get a great job. And you'll be married in six months. And she just looked at me like I was crazy. Like I lost my mind. I said, I have. I lost my mind a long time ago. I could never tell you this with the mind that I had. She said, but what's, what good's a penny going to do? A penny a month. 
And so she said, can you help me name some ministries? I said, Brother Copeland, he'll take a penny a month. Kenneth and Gloria said, give them a penny. Give Brother Hagee a penny. I just started naming some ministries that I thought were credible, powerful ministries. And she said, can you help me get the seven ministries together? I said, yeah, we'll help you. Call the office. But I said, let's get this thing rolling. And she said, you're telling me what? Say that one more time. You're going to be healed. You're going to have a phenomenal job. And she said, but it's about the marriage, the marriage. I said, you're going to... She didn't care about the money or the back. She brought me letters from these ministries I just named that write a thank you. I th and they said, we thank you so much for your point zero one. She proved to me, she brought me these letters. She said, I can't believe they would spend money. They spent more money on their thank you letter than I gave to them. She said, this is not a fair deal for them. I know. You just fully obey. Peter thought he fished out that place. Guess what? He did. But when you fully obey, God will put fish there. There was no fish there. It just wasn't a bad day. When you fully obey, God puts money there that's not there. Kidneys that aren't there, he puts there. New eyes, new knees. So about 30 days, she called the office. She said, my God. She said, my back, I can't imagine. My back don't hurt at all. Tell Pastor Billy, my back is completely healed. So I got the word. I said, amen, amen. That's pretty good. And then about another 30 days, she calls back. She says, I got this incredible job. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So there's a two down, one to go, right? She called back almost six months. She said, tell Pastor Billy I love him. I'll probably never have to come to church again the rest of my life. She said, I met a man, and he lives, and guess what he does for a living? She said, Pastor, he's into Texas tea. Come on, somebody. And she said, Pastor, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you. She said, I can't believe sowing a penny a month would cause such a tidal wave. I said, it's not the penny. It's the obedience. It creates a fair playing field. Come on, put your hands up all over the place. Come on, say, there's a wave coming. A wave coming. Bigger than I've ever seen. Than I've ever seen. It's, full of power. it's full of power. And the glory. And the glory. It's going to pick me up. And take me. Where I can't take myself. The wave. Will relocate me. In a place of faith. And favor. Like I've never known. When I do what he says, he'll do what he says. And when he does what he says, it's all over. Come on, give God a shout tonight. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Sir, right here, you. Come on over here. You, sir, with that shirt on. Yeah, come, sir. What are you here for tonight? What are you here for? What are you here for? Sunday. A minor stroke. You had a minor stroke. Uh-huh. TIA. Mm-hmm. And what happened? I passed out. Here, Sunday. This past Sunday. And I wasn't able to speak. You wasn't able to speak. <laughs> well, you're speaking now. I know. When did you start speaking? Right now. <laughs> you better get out of your seat. You, 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 you better.
Lord. Say it out loud. Keep to it. be a blessing and bring in the harvest, the biggest harvest ever seen in this church, in this town, in this state. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. I you his wife? Come here. He couldn't talk like this? Huh? Get the mic on him. Uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't talk at all. Just a few minutes ago, he just couldn't talk. I couldn't understand him. And I had to translate everything for him, for everybody. It was just so frustrating for him because he just couldn't get his speech right. And nobody can understand anything that he had to say. It's so frustrating for him. And I can't believe You what? I couldn't run my business. I couldn't do a business call. You're talking. <laughs> Give God. Come on. Come on. Come on. And we give you Come on. The victory. Give God. Give God. Glory. Woo. Give God. Come on. Glory. to check your body right now I guarantee you he's not the only one I never touched him there's something going on around here and he will give you the victory if you're here with cataracts rub your eyes take your glasses off Mess with your ears, shake your leg, turn around. There's people here already healed. Come on, if it's different, get up here now. Hurry, hurry. If you're already different, come now. Come on, I'm waiting. What happened? On my, in my um, forehead, one eyebrow is higher than the other. I felt something go go. Pick up your up. muscle. Yes. You're, they're my easy. shoulder's been hurting me. And that's gone. And that's gone. Oh, my God. What happened, sir? That was sir? from an accident. I couldn't sleep, like, for four or five days. I could not sleep. But last night you prayed for me and I went home good and I sleep. You slept. slept? Yeah. I was, I was staying awake, like, 24-7. And I cannot sleep at all, even like with sleeping pills and stuff. But uh, you prayed for me last night. He's sitting in a seat, he can't talk, and the power hits him. He's trying to hit everybody in this place. You got to rub yourself. You got to check it. You got to say, is that, is that, is that hernia still there? Where's that lump? Where's that bad back? 
Where's that fibromyalgia? Yes, ma'am. Jackie. I've had an earache all afternoon, and it was really paining me tonight, and it all of a sudden... Ah! I'm waiting for a few more to step up here. Yes, ma'am. There's more. What happened, ma'am? I've had low back pain and a numbness in my leg for like the last three weeks. A numbness? Yes, all the way down. And to the knees. back? Yeah, my back. And? It's gone. <sighs> Are you happy? Yes! Come on, ma'am. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Check, check. Yes, ma'am. I'm here for something different. Yesterday, when you when you were talking and you said that the, when the woman um, get the handful yes. and give it to the prophet, yeah. my spirit quickened and I and then got to get your um, jubilee seed from your wallet. Huh. But I didn't want to disturb you when you were doing that. But in the name of Jesus, I give it to you now. I don't. Right when it's down there, it's down there. Just put that in the offering. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm, I'm confused. I, what happened? I have too much problem in my stomach and you, my back. It's not there. My leg. It's all gone? Yeah, no. No, I'm confused. I am coming here. The first time you're coming? Yeah. Well, have you checked it? I'm, I'm not the priest for me. I know, but check it first. Yeah. What? The first time. Huh? First time I'm I, know, I know it's the first time you're here. Yeah. You're visiting tonight? Yeah. Where church do you go to? In Church of God. Does your pastor know you're here tonight? Yeah. He doesn't know. You're my pastor too. Look into that camera right there. Look okay. into that camera right there. Say hi, pastor. Where do you hurt at? Yeah. Is it hurting now? Yeah. Check it. Here. Check it. I'm check. I'm having a problem here. This still hurt? Yes. And my butt. Your butt? And my stomach. Your butt? Mm-hmm. B-U-T. T. Butt. I'm going to do the pain of it. The butt pain. The butt's bad. Mm-hmm. The back's bad. And the chest. I'm still stuck on the monkey jungle down here. (laughs) By the Holy Ghost on that woman. Come on, somebody, what happened? I can't sleep. I'm I'm sleep. I'm supposed to drink medicine for sleep. You can't sleep sleep either? No. no. You having trouble sleeping? Yeah. How long has it been since you slept? Long time. You'll sleep tonight. Okay. You'll sleep tonight. Okay. I want you to use. I want you to use two pillows, though. Okay. How many pillows do you normally use? One. One. I want you to use two pillows tonight. Okay. Okay. You'll go right to sleep. Okay. By the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. What happened to you last night? <laughs> what happened to you? I looked for you to help me, and you weren't there. What happened? Look at me. You're going to be not just successful, but you're going to be satisfied. (laughs) A lot of successful people are still empty. She'll be successful and full. All the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him praise. Come on. You couldn't speak at all. I couldn't speak at all. I would. I couldn't get my words across. I mean, Four I, times I, I understand year. everything you're saying. I don't, I'm healed. I'm well. I'm perfect. I'm whole. Whole. Not only. In my speech, I'm whole, complete. My spirit is whole. 
I'm sorry? My spirit is whole. I am whole. Not only my speech, my life is whole. I am blessed to be a blessing. The Lord has talked to me for many years. And this is You have to be shocked, right? How long has he how long has he been not able to talk? Uh-huh. Dizzy, can't drive, can't talk. Can't talk, can't drive. He's been dizzy. I've had to drive him around. I've been having to take him to the job sites. Everything. It's it's just amazing the way he is at this moment. It's, a, it's God. It's God. It's God. It's what? It's the way it is in my life. He is. Hey, tomorrow night, you don't want to miss tomorrow night? From the top the whole way through we're going to cut this altar loose and believe God for an, an invasion of the supernatural if you're out there watching by internet you need to get here tomorrow night the devil tried to put a monsoon on this crowd tonight but nothing's going to hold back revival Put your hands up. If you'll not be ashamed of the Lord and if you'll be bold, if you'll be bold like a lion, God says, he'll clear a path before you and take you and your wife where you could never take yourselves. Thank you. And he will make you so prosperous, he'll free up your time to testify of the goodness of God. Yes. And you will be a Pied Piper. You will bring thousands to church. To church. To church. Oh. Come on, give him a sh Yes, sir. Hernia disappeared. I had a hernia disappear. You had a hernia. Disappear. No way. Yes. Come wait. on, his hernia. Tell him, get up there. His hernia disappeared. What do you think of that? Awesome. How long have you had a hernia? Uh, a couple of months. <whistles> wow. Yes. At first I said, Lord, I'm not going to go out there unless, he, unless you tell me. And he said, you, you said, I'm waiting. And the Holy Spirit said, step out. Hallelujah. You should be reaching when you're expecting. You're looking and feeling. And Oh my gosh. Come on, put your hands up. Come on, say, Lord, give me some of this. Send it on down. I'm ready. I'm wide open. I'm a believer. Come on, give God a shout. Awesome, awesome. Bring me her. What's the matter, sweetheart? You can thank your local drunk driver for breaking my neck and my back. And I have served at the church for four hours today and I can hardly stand. Here? Um, here? No, it's some French church. I don't even Bring her understand up here, guys. their can language. You come, can you I come up here? Feed the people can I get a little bit of soda? A little bit of soda or something carbonated? Come over here, ma'am and the hungry all the time because I can. What happened? Are you what did you were hit? I was hit by a drunk driver and um, I broke my neck in two places and my back in four places. I have a really bad shoulder and a bad leg and this is my good leg I'm standing on that does its little give out thing every so two is that, seconds. Is that, so is that why you're it's twitching or because I'm about to fall down. My legs won't let me stand on them for any... That's why I kept sitting down and standing and sitting. 
And I, I need to be healed. There's a lot of people in this world, and I want to help them. So where do you hurt? Oh, my neck, my back, and my knee, and my shoulder. Mm -hmm. It took out the whole right side of my body. Mm. I was in a wheelchair for three years, and I got angry and pushed it away. And I don't walk on a wheelchair or a walker. I won't use crutches. I don't take blood how, pressure how medicine. Did, how did you hear about this, sir? How did you hear about this meeting tonight? I was serving the homeless and the, the low-income families today. Uh -huh. um, 150 families I served. Uh -huh. I helped serve. Uh -huh. And one of the girls that was at the church brought me here. I'm from Colorado. I have no friends. I know nobody, not one soul in this state. But I feed 150 families. She has a lot of new friends tonight. Because I know God can heal me, and he will. And I'm ready. I need to serve South Florida. I feed South Florida. And the face you see. Amazing. And feeding 150 people a week, I lean on fences. They bring me chairs. They do everything to keep me upright so I can do this. And if I have to do it from a sitting position, standing, laying, I don't care. You guys are getting food. Any way I got to give it to you. I don't care. God will make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm... I, I want my body strong. I don't take pain pills. I don't take sleeping pills. I don't take blood pressure pills. I am 100% medicine free. And I was on blood pressure pills for four and a half years. And this year I got upset and I said, God, I'm done. Take me home or heal me. It's been four months. No stroke, no heart attack, and no medicine. So now I want one more thing from God. We are feeding 500 families a month <clears throat> that need. You're this not twitching food. anymore. I know, and I'm on this leg, and I above my back. You're not twitching anymore. I'm not. By the Holy Ghost, I get that. Oh, come on, somebody, give God. in your body he's mixing his power with your body you'll never be the same you'll never be the same pick her up guys come on quickly help her up walk walk down the steps go come on go fast come on let's go I want you to hear this okay you tell them what you just told me go ahead God has my heart and now I got his I did not believe this was real I see this on TV I pray I serve I love you all black white striped or polka dotted I don't care all I can say is God why not me why not me not why me, why not me? I have things to do. But now you know it's real. It's real, you guys. I did not believe it's real. Come on, give God a shout. Do 
you talk about money and then get miracles? Because they're connected. That's amazing. What's your name, sweet? Where'd she go? What's your name? Sandy, and so what this ministry you have, what's the name of it? I really don't know. I've been serving for four months and I don't know. You're Herman. not twitching. You're not twitching. No, I'm not. And I'm actually standing on both legs. I'm not lying. This is real. This is real. And I didn't believe. And now I know it is real. Wow. Herman, Herman Community Service. Help me. Where do I serve food? Herman Community Center? 2601 Fillmore Street. I don't know. Seventh-day Adventist Church. They speak French. I don't even speak their language. I do not understand a single word in that church. This is ever. revival! Huh? What happened? And I can't sleep at night. And, I, and every night I just like get up at the middle of the night and I just can't sleep and too much energy or something. She's dancing. Sir, yes. sir. You brought her? Who all came with her? Who all came with her? I feel no quickening at all. <laughs> I like the boots. <laughs> Boy, <I'm, laughs> I gotta watch everywhere that I go right now. Look at me, people. What's happening here is about to break loose. Holy Ghost, give him rest. Give him in all. Yes, Pastor, what do we have here, Jerry? There's a baby here. Just a minute, we've got to bring the baby over here. What's the matter with the baby? Cardiac. The cardiac rest. He's cardiac. Diagnosed with tetralogy of phallus, which is the unilateral, unilateral how the heart works. Uh, come on over here, I can't hear what you're saying. Okay. He was, he's 10 days old, diagnosed with 10 days old. Tetralogy of Phalax and Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it's just here, I was invited here. He said he has Down syndrome? Yes. He they said that? Yes. yes, yes. Who said that? The doctor. I don't see any Down syndrome. Amen. Amen. I see God adding chromosomes. Come on, somebody. You were invited here tonight. Where do you go to church? I actually live in New York City. New York City. Yes. So God brought him via New York City. To North Miami Beach. Yes. And who are you? The mother. The Your mother. wife. 
And who are you? Your sister. I'm the one that invited me to church. You're, this is your church? Yes. You coming tonight saved this baby's life. You saved the normal forming and shaping. Because God is going to intervene. Do you hear me? What's the baby's name? Matthew. Matthew. Ten days old. Yes. Ten days old. Ten days. Every hand up in the whole place, okay? My God, what's going to happen here tomorrow night? Oh, my. The diagnosis is going to change on this baby. You must go somewhere else than where you went the first time. But I'm going to tell you what God told Noah. Wait seven more days. Tonight you get the olive branch. But in seven days you get the open door. Oh, the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am, quickly. What's this, ma'am? Rest. I haven't huh? been able to sleep at night. I've been in so much pain. Where's your pain at? It's was in my chest. And Is my your lower pain there neck. now? What do you mean, no? I feel different. You feel different? Yes. Thank when, you, Jesus. When did it leave? Just now, a few minutes ago. I've been coughing a lot, to a lot of cold and phlegm in my chest. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been able to sleep. I've been tossing and turning. I'm going through a financial situation. I need prayer. Matter of fact, just to get here, I was on E. To get here, I said, God, I'm pressing my way. Even if I don't have gas, I'm pressing my way here tonight. But Holy Ghost. Somebody give him a shout. Oh. Woo. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. And great is thy faithfulness. Come on, great. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. All I have needed. All I have needed. Thy hand and through my hand. Great. Great is thy What's going on here, sir? My uh, legs, they feel cold all the time. Your what? My legs. Your my, leg? My bottom of my leg. Yes. What happened to it? They feel cold all the time. It what? They feel cold. Cold? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just your one leg? Both. Uh, Both legs. Mm -hmm. yes. That's called your extremities. Your legs and your arms are your extremities. That's where heat leaves the easiest. Have you been to the doctors? Yes. What did they say? They said me to take therapy, but uh. Do what? They had me. They took. I took therapy about a about a week. Protein powder. Therapy, you know. Ex therapy. Ex ex exercise. And Has that helped? No, 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 it didn't help. no, no. So you're cold. You need the fire of God. Stomach problem. You have stomach problems? Yeah. yeah What's stomach. wrong with your stomach? 
It's bothering all the time. Is it bothering you now? Yes, sir. Right time. now? Yes, sir. Put your hands up. And Holy Ghost, I pray the fire of God come on him. Well, the power's already on you. Touch his belly, his legs, and put him on fire. Put a heat wave all through him, a heat wave. Oh, all oh, the power. All oh, the power. Great is thy faith. Yes, yes. Give me the lady, yes. Tomorrow we'll be spending more time here around the altar, yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm fine. I just came. Oh, you're fine? You're with him. Oh. So you're okay. Huh? I had this ringing in my ear for the past and three months, maybe uh -huh. more. And now? It's not ringing. Her ringing in the ear stopped! <laughs> Great is thy faith! Uh-huh. I suffer from depression. Uh-huh. I'm going through a hard time in my life. What I ask for, give me faith. I'm a doubting Thomas. I've been with the church for many years. I'm looking for my faith to be renewed. It should be starting to be renewed by what's happened, right? Isn't that kind of... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything that you see and hear that God privileges you to see. Missionaries serve a lifetime, never see one miracle. So when a man says, I couldn't talk, and this lady here said she didn't believe. These aren't things you just take lightly. You... Wow! Mary had to ponder them in her heart because they were too big for her to swallow. She had to, she couldn't digest. It took her some time. And that's what God's doing with you tonight. He has you on the road back. And it's going to be a stronger road than the one you were on. But you're going to be open. And you're open because you're here. Put your hands up. What's your name? Mark. Who's these ladies, Mark? Uh, my wife. Come, wife. Come, wife. How are you doing, sweetheart? Good. What's your name? Eileen. Eileen. You're happy to be here? Yes. <laughs> you go to church here? Uh, no. Calvary. Calvary. Calvary Chapel. Calvary Chapel. Yes. Put your hands up. Holy Ghost, I give you praise tonight. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for this couple. I thank you for your presence. And God, I pray for an increase of your presence in both of them. That from this day forward, God, you would set a clear path, an undeniable path. Revelation 3, 8, an open door of occurring circumstances that they cannot argue that God your hand is on their life God said it's been slow coming and he's tarried with you long but he's about to deliver you speedily he's about to wait wait leave her go leave her go that's the power working all over her
What happened? Nothing. I don't know. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. Come on.
is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every hand up, say right now. He's healing me. Right now. My mind, my body, my life, my memories. I'm being healed right now. I'll never be the same. Come on, let's give him a shout. Come here. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why am I here? Uh -huh. I want to receive from the Lord. What? Healing. What? Um, insomnia, ringing of the ears. This sleep thing that's going around, sleep deprivation, it's all connected to peace. Peace is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. It anchors you. You feel peace right now, don't you? Mm -hmm. You're going to take this home and sleep all night. Thank oh, the you. Power. Here comes the power. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Mm. Mm. My, 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 my. Bring me that young man right there with the jacket on. Yeah. Very young guy. What's going on here? Huh? Come on, talk to me. What's going on? I feel like I was brought here for a reason. You're visiting sure. tonight? Yeah, I came with my parents. Your parents brought you? Yeah. Just don't have the words. You don't have words. You're feeling something. God's stirring you. There's a war going on for your soul tonight. And there's a part of you that doesn't want to be here. There's a part of you that wants to stay. When you catch a deep sea fish, why do they fight to come out of that element? Why do you have to strap somebody in a chair and put gloves on them? and they wrestle a fish for hours. That fish does not want to come out of the dark. It battles to stay in the element. He's fighting, but he knows. In his spirit, he knows the right thing to do. God has broken into his life tonight. How we will know that this thing has broken wide open is when we begin to see more of this. Just people crying out for God to invade their life. I'll take a healing, but I got to get God in my life. I got to get back. I got to get, I got to get back to God. Mm. What's your name, young man? Chris. How old are you? 25. 25. <laughs> Sam, coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to God. Coming back to God. I'm coming back to His perfect will. Coming back to His perfect will. He gives me the grace and the strength. He gives me the grace and the strength. I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm going all the way with Jesus. If there's anybody else in this room tonight that has the courage to come and stand with this man and say the same thing, you're here tonight, but you know you're not in the trail of God, the path of light. You may be a member of this church, but away from God. 
You may be a visitor tonight, but away from God. I want you to come right now. I'm not going to wait long. Come right now. Hurry. Don't wait. Come right now. Stand with this young man. Here's another one. Come. 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 Hurry. Come. 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 Hurry. Hurry. Oh, my. I know we have a pastor here that will take them, right? Pray, all of you at the altar, pray. Say, dear Jesus, I need a cleansing. That cleansing stream of the blood that flows from Calvary. I'm willing to change, but I need your help. I will change with your help. Live inside of me. Wash my mind, my heart, my words, my footsteps. Put the blood all over me. I'm going to follow you from today forward. In Jesus' name. Give God a shout. Come on. Where they go? Follow this guy right here for five minutes. Follow him. Follow, follow. Come on, follow. Come on. Five minutes, quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, give God a shout, people. Come on. Huh? She has a bad meeting in the school, so I want to... Brother Holy Ghost. Everybody's hands high in the air. Come on. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Isn't God good? Yes, it is. We thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah. She'll be okay. She'll be okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, we give you pray. Wow. No. No, you're fine. Shh. 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 We thank you. Everyone say, Lord, cleanse me. Lord, empty me. And Lord, fill me with a fresh fire that I've never had before. Hit my wet wood and make it burn in Jesus' name. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, 7.30. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask that everyone take a seat at this time as we follow the Lord. We're going to sow seed for His glory. I'm going to ask the ushers to serve an envelope, please.